A couple videos ago when I was doing my day in a life here in Chiang Mai, I mentioned that I was doing like file storing, that I was getting caught up on storing and sending all my images away to clients. And I've had a lot of questions recently on how I do that. What's my photography workflow? So on this episode, rather than going out and vlogging and stuff like that, I thought I'd do a bit more of an educational video and I'm gonna take you through my entire photography workflow from the stage of taking the picture all the way to sending it off to clients. To kind of help as a visual aid, I'm scribbling stuff onto this piece of paper as well. So let's start with step one. Step one is obvious, it's taking the pictures. And now I'm not gonna go out and shoot a picture right now, I'm gonna be lazy and use the pictures I took yesterday when I was out shooting the temple here in Chiang Mai. So we're gonna go with those images now. It seems simple to say, oh, just go out and shoot the pictures, that's step one. It's not so simple, because you need to be thinking about the long run. You need to be thinking about how those images are gonna sell. Are they gonna be for micro stock? Are they gonna be for an adventure client? Are they gonna be for a travel client? Who are those images gonna be for? And that's really, really important for when you're shooting. The other important factor, of course, is are you shooting in RAW? And you probably should be shooting in RAW if you're not. Shooting RAW just gives you a little bit more wiggle room when you're editing, which we'll get to later on. Now step two, step two. I feel like my writing is improving. You guys might remember my older videos. I feel like I'm getting better at writing on these pieces of paper. Step two is transferring your files. Transferring your files is also an important step because this is where you could lose images if you're not careful. So I actually keep my images in three different places and so I transfer them when I get back home onto my computer and onto hard drives. The way I do it is this. I keep the original files on the SD card that they were shot on and then I send the raw files to this, this is my SSD card, and I also send them directly to my laptop. So now I've got the files in three different places. I'm only gonna work on them off of my SSD card, but they're in three different places so they, I, I don't lose them. The next step is to import the files into your photo editing software. I do my photo editing 99% in Lightroom. I work everything through Lightroom, even if it goes into Photoshop eventually. So I import the files into Lightroom. As I mentioned, I import them off of my SSD card. And that's important because I'm keeping the raw files on the SSD card. And when you edit in Lightroom, you're not editing the photo itself. Lightroom's a non-destructive way of editing, and that simply means that what Lightroom does is it creates a preview file of your photo using your raw file. And when you edit it, it's not actually changing the image, it's just creating a preview of what it'll look like if you apply the different edits. And the reason I edit off the SSD is because the files are gonna end up there, and in the future, 20 years from now, if I want, I can just open Lightroom up, go to the files on the SSD card, and the previews and the edit that I did in the past will still be on here. So that's super cool and an important part of the process for me. There's other ways around it, but I'm not gonna get into that. The next step, of course, is editing. And editing is something I mentioned I do almost entirely in Lightroom, but I definitely bring everything through Lightroom. Every now and then I'll take an image in Lightroom and I'll send it over to Photoshop to edit in Photoshop to do something like clone stamping or blending images or something like that. But then it comes right back into Lightroom. So the whole process starts and ends in Lightroom even if there's a jump to Photoshop in the middle. Now as I'm editing, I'm also going through step five, which is to cull images. I'm doing my cull as I edit. And there's different ways of culling. Some people go through their images before they even start to edit and they just start deleting the ones that they don't like. Other people wait until the end of everything before they start deleting. I go through at the same time. So I'm going image one, I'm editing it if I like it. If I don't like it and I wanna remove it, I just press X in Lightroom. And what that does is it flags the image as rejected. And then when I'm done editing, I've gone through all my images, all I have to do is hit control delete and it will delete all the images that I've rejected. It just makes things way, way easier. And in case you're wondering, Lightroom will give you an option. It'll say, do you wanna remove the files from Lightroom or do you wanna delete them entirely? If you choose to delete them entirely, it's gonna delete the raw files completely off of your computer. They're gonna be gone. 
That's what I do. And that's just because if I'm deleting it from Lightroom, I have no need for those files in the future. They're gone, they're dead to me. And what's left are the files that we're gonna keep, the keepers. And once you've got those keepers in Lightroom, I go back to the library module and I do my least favorite part of my photography workflow, which is keywording. I hate keywording. It's boring, it's monotonous, it's mind numbing. But it's such an important part of the process because it'll save you time in the future and it'll make your life so much easier. So I keyword all my images. For example, these Chiang Mai images, the entire stack of the images can be keyworded in bulk. Chiang Mai, Thailand, temple, the name of the temple, architecture, the word temple, the word Buddhism, Buddhist, religion, all those keywords can be applied to all of them and then I can pick and choose different ones like this image that has Jody in it, I can keyword Jody Dubery into it. Or an image that's at sunset, I can choose the word sunset. And keywording is so important because when I'm eventually sending these files to my clients, the keywords will already be there for them so that they can search them and that their clients can also search them. If I send them to Microstock and I upload them to Microstock, all those keywords are already there and I don't have to retype it out another time. And on top of that, it's kind of hard categorizing all your images when you save them in the future as well. And by keywording them, it makes it much less important. Personally, I kind of categorize all my images based on country and then location, and that makes it easy to find images from certain spots, but if I wanna find like an image of an old man, or an image of an elephant, or an image of a baby cheetah, those things might not be location specific, and by keywording them properly, I can just go into the folders where all my files are, and I can search baby elephant, and all my images with baby elephants will show up, making it super easy. So even if keywording is the most boring thing in the world, do it. The next step is exporting your files as JPEGs. Now, not only is the export itself important, you should be exporting the JPEGs as high resolution as possible, but what you name them is important. So I always name them based on the city, the month, the year, and I put my own name onto it. That way if you eventually send the images to clients, it has all that information right there in the title. And so that's super important. I export my images at full size and a resolution of 300 DPI. And that pretty much does the trick. Now I export my JPEGs to two places and they're both hard drives. One's a hard drive that I work off of. This hard drive's basically attached to my laptop at all times. And then I also export them to another HDD, another hard drive that basically sits in my suitcase the entire time. So now the JPEGs are in two different places. And then once I have all the JPEGs onto my two external hard drives, I can move on to the next step, which is step snowman, step eight, step infinity, which is storing. And the storing process is pretty simple. I keep the JPEGs on those two HDDs. I keep the raw files on the one SSD. I only keep the raw files in one place. And once that's done and I'm solid in the fact that all my images are stored properly, I move on to step number nine, which is the cloud. Wherever you send your images, wherever you upload your images onto the cloud, it's totally up to you. There's lots of services. I use Amazon. And the reason I use Amazon is because I'm an Amazon Prime member, which I only paid $19.99 a year for, and they have unlimited photo storage as a part of Prime Photos. And with Prime Photos, you can upload both JPEGs and RAW files. So I upload all my RAW files from here, and I upload all my JPEG files from here. So now even if all my hard drives crash, I've still got my images backed up online and I can access them anywhere in the world. At this point, I actually delete all the RAW files and all the JPEGs from my computer and the SD card. Completely gone, they're backed up, they're saved, everything's cool. Okay, so now that we've got everything backed up, everything keyworded, everything organized, we can get to the fun part, which is sending the images to potential clients and selling the images, hopefully. So for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna pretend that there was 10 sellable images from my shoot in Chiang Mai yesterday. So essentially, all images equals 100% of the images. And the first stage to sending clients is asking yourself, was I on assignment? Or do I have a retainer this month? An assignment is obvious. If I was sent here by the Thai Tourism Board to shoot images and I'd promised them, let's say, two images a day, then obviously they have the first pick of the images. Retainer is if there's a client that says, hey Brendan, we wanna buy 10 images a month, 
from you. We're going to pay $2,000 a month at the start of the month for those images, but we want first grab of the images. That's a retainer. So you're going to ask yourself, am I on an assignment or is somebody paying me a retainer? And if the answer is yes, obviously they have first pick of the litter. Let's say for argument's sake, you are on assignment with the Thai tourism board and they've asked for two images a day. So what you're going to do is you're going to send all 10 of those images you shot at Chiang Mai to the Thai tourism board, your assignment client, and they're going to pick two. So now you're down to just eight images. And that process sometimes takes time. It's really simple for me to sit here and say, oh yeah, you just knock all this out in like a couple hours. But the reality is sometimes this whole process takes at least a month just because it takes time for people to respond and decide on images and stuff like that. So you've sent your images to the assignment client or the retainer client. They've picked their two images. You're left with eight images. The next stage is editorial, and editorial is an option. I mentioned in my Income Octopus videos that I don't chase editorial anymore. I used to. I used to spend about 60, 70% of my time chasing editorial clients. And what I used to do there is I would take my images, I would put preview files or low resolution files on a website like SmugMug in a private folder, and then I would send off those images along with a story idea to different magazines or newspapers or whatever. As a travel photographer, you can't really just send images to editorial clients. You can't just send a photo and be like, publish this and pay me. You need a story idea behind it, even if it's just a photo essay. But you probably want to build a whole story around the photos that you shoot. It just makes it so much easier to sell them. So you put all those images online, you pitch like 20 different magazines and newspapers a story, and one of the editorial clients comes back and says, hey, we want to buy one of those images and make it the photo of the month or the photo of the week or something like that. We want a 50 word bl blurb with it and we'll pay you X amount of money. You've now only got seven images left from your shoot. You're down to 70%. At that point, I send my images to my rights managed agency. My rights managed agency is Tandem Stock Stills in Motion and I send my images there first because I know that they're going to get me the best value for my money. I know that if they sell an image for me, it's going to have a pretty good payday attached to it. So I'll send the rest of my images, all seven of those images to Tandem Stock. They'll take maybe four of those images, add them to their photo library, and I can move on. The images I have left over, I, like the, the scraps, I guess, let's call them, I send to MicroStock. And the reason I send my scraps to MicroStock is because I think the value is kind of gone at that point for me, and I'm just trying to get whatever I can out of those images. And that's not to say that MicroStock isn't going to earn you money or can't earn you money. I've had some images on MicroStock sell for like a thousand dollars over the longevity that they've been online. So MicroStock is a great place to get that last bit of value out of your images. And the final goal is to have 0% of your images left. At the end of the day, you want to get all the value sucked out of the images that you shot. So basically you make as much money as you possibly can from those images. It also should be noted that just because you're sending these images off to clients doesn't mean you've lost the rights to the images. It doesn't mean that you no longer own the images. You can still use the images for your personal use as much as you want. And usually there's not an exclusivity to a lot of these things. So quite often you can even sell the same images to different sources depending on the exclusivities and rights that you have to those images. So I think that's it. I know it's a long video, I know it's a lot of talking this video, but I kind of wanted to do a little bit of an educational video since it's been a lot of vlogs in the past. Now, having said that, we're moving towards vlogs again. I'm here in Chiang Mai still, heading to Koh Samui tomorrow, and it's going to be a lot of fun going to the island. There'll be some photography, there'll be some nature, there'll be some beaches, maybe some waterfalls. And then after that, I'm going to be making trips to Chiang Rai. I'm going to be shooting some more temples here in Chiang Mai. And it should just be an awesome couple weeks here in Thailand. So I hope you guys stay tuned to that. And if you guys have any other questions, I'll try to answer them in the comment section the best I can. And if you have any ideas for educational videos that you guys want to see on this channel, let me know in the comments as well. So I'm out of here before I completely lose my voice and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.